It is time for the part that the mayor has been waiting for this whole program, the OTR Pup Quiz. She was in, so excited, she, she was, was so clapping excited. her hands. Right. Well, the funny thing, in the prompter, she's seen the first line, but other than that, she hasn't seen anything else. So, you, as you can see, your dad was in the Navy, yep. and you were, don't move the prompter, just leave it right there. And you were born in Hawaii where he was serving. So let's start with the islands. Okay. We're going to put three names on the screen. Two of them are Hawaiian islands. One is not. Leyte, Moloki, or Lanai. Oh, this is a tough one. Uh -huh. um, one of I, them is not. Well, I want to spend time on all of them because they're an island. <laughs> but right. I will say A, Leyte. Leyte is correct. It is in the Philippines. You are one for one. So let's Was that a pure guess? <laughs> Uh, you know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good politician. Let's talk about an island closer to home, Children's Island, which is which is part of Salem, as yes. you know. It was once known as Cat Island. Correct. Since 1955, there's been a YMCA day camp there. Long before that, there was something else there. On the screen, we're going to give you options. So what what was there? Was it a jail? Was it a hospital? Was it a speakeasy? Wouldn't it be great if it was a speakeasy? <laughs> well, there you go. I think it was a hospital. In 1773, <laughs> Essex Hospital was built as a smallpox inoculation site. There you go. You're two for two. The pressure is mounting. <laughs> you would like to become Lieutenant Governor. As we have told you, we have a list of unusual names for you. We're going to put them on the screen here. One of these names, one of these people served as a Massachusetts Lieutenant Governor. Was it Alpha Latrask? Was it Oliver Birdwhistle? Or was it Seamus Pickle? <laughs> I have no idea, but I like the idea of Lieutenant Governor Pickle, so I'm going to go with that one. Well, you know what? That's the one I picked when we, when we practiced this, and it's not. It's Trask. Right. And then Trask was also a mayor, a mayor of Springfield, and he made, by the way, we made up the other two names. Oh, <laughs> that's actually, the part. Actually, our producer made up those two That's the part names. that got me. It was great. All right. Since you have a bewitched statue in Salem, as everyone knows, which, by the way, got, we got some rough recently, treatment a few days ago, right? Some yeah. red paint. We have a question about the classic sitcom Bewitched. Okay. Samantha Stevens, played by Elizabeth Montgomery, had a prank loving uncle, played by comic actor Paul Lind. So your question is what was his uncle, what was her uncle's name? Was it Uncle Fester? Was it Uncle Arthur or Uncle Tanous? Uh, Uncle Arthur. Uncle Arthur. Uncle Fester, of course, was in Adam's family. <laughs> and so you, you were perfect. It's three for four is pretty good. Great. Seventy-five percent is pretty good. You tricked me with making up names, though. I think that's, that's well, fair. Trust me, Pickle got me, too. So, <laughs> so speaking of last weekend, uh, you emerged from the state convention with the endorsement of the party insiders. Not all of your rivals got the 15% needed to make the ballot. Some claim that it does nothing but ignite unnecessary internal strife, and it deters a lot of new candidates from entering the fray, running for office. Is it time to get rid of that 15% uh, rule? You know, I definitely think it's worth a conversation. Both Adam Hines and Brett Barrow, we got to know each other, you know, on the course of the campaign trail. Terrific individuals, worked hard, put the time in. I think they had something important to say. But those were also the rules at the beginning. Nobody changed it. It wasn't a bait and a switch. It's worthwhile for the party to look at that. Uh, as well as, you know, we all collected 10,000 signatures. We did it all grassroots, lots of volunteers. You know, is that the right number uh, to ensure that we're having voter access right. and not having barriers that keep people who are good and qualified and have something to say from being on the ballot? But you're not saying absolutely no. We yeah, don't know. Okay. I don't think so. I think it's worth a conversation, though. You, you, as as we, as everyone knows, you would like to be lieutenant governor, and and obviously being lieutenant governor by definition is playing second banana to the governor. So, question one: Who would you prefer to serve with? You know, I feel like the skill sets I have as a mayor, um, someone who's been in local office for 16 years, been an executive, I call it the get stuff done wing, have something to offer to either of the candidates. It's exciting that we have two women candidates. Um, I know them both a little. I certainly know the attorney general a little bit more, um, but I think I could be a strong asset to either one. And what would be your first ask? The most important yeah. issue, if you know, if you're elected and you're in there, your first ask. I think the one that you want to be yeah. in charge of, that you would like to take over. So I, you know, I, th I think you need to have a strong, trusting, respectful relationship with the governor. I think the key to any organization, you need a strong team around you, people that you can trust uh, and that you respect and that you think are talented. Some of the issues that I hope to work on would certainly be being a champion for cities. As someone who's been a mayor, I know what it's like in the trenches on the ground. Want to continue to support our communities. When our cities are strong and vibrant, our commonwealth is strong and vibrant. And the next would be housing. It is impacting everybody no matter where you live, the cost of housing, the, avail the availability of housing. How do we come together? Cities and states don't build housing. We need to work across sectors to put more housing in places and make sure a whole heck of a lot of it uh, is more affordable to people who live in our communities. And I assume if you're Lieutenant Governor, you're still going to be in Salem on Halloween, right? <laughs> Uh, Halloween is a working holiday for the mayor of Salem. <laughs> I will be there. <laughs> Our thanks to Kim Driscoll. It's great to have you with us this morning on the record.